Hi, I'm Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and math advisor for Texas Instruments. This short video is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus series, and we're going to take a look at using the TI 84 with two dimensional parametric functions and distinguish between distance and displacement. Let's get started. Well, first thing we need to do is change our mode to parametric. So we've gone to the mode settings and changed from function to parametric and we will go to the y equals menu and we're set up for our parametric entries. Now we're going to enter a couple of functions that appeared in the BC AP exam from 2018 question 2. Now these two functions are actually velocity functions for a boat at sea. So x1 of t is 662 times sine of 5t, y1t is 880 times cosine of 6t. Once we've entered these velocity functions, we'll go ahead and use them to answer one of the questions at hand. That was to calculate the total distance the boat traveled over the time interval from 0 to 1. To do that, we'll get a definite integral using f and the int from the math menu. Our interval is from 0 to 1, but what we'll need to do is integrate the speed of the boat over that time interval. Since we have the components of the velocity, we can use those to create a speed function in our integrand. That will be the square root of the sum of squares of the two velocity components. So you'll notice we retrieved x1t from the y variables menu and squared it. We'll go back to the parametric y variables menu again, retrieve y1t, square that, sum them, take the square root, and we'll integrate with respect to t. Once we calculate that, we'll get the answer of 757.45, either 5 truncated or 6 rounded. And that's in meters. That was the units given for the position. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is distinguish between distance and displacement. This is the total distance that the boat traveled, but what was its actual change in position? That would be the displacement. So what we're going to do is create a couple of position functions. We have the velocities, so we're going to just assume that our boat is initially located at the origin and we'll create a couple of position functions by anti-differentiating the velocity. We'll, for x2t, we'll integrate from 0 to t of our velocity, x1t, retrieving that from the y variables menu. And then we'll integrate with respect to t. Now it will give us a position function for the x component of our position. And now for the y, we'll do the same thing. Again, we'll get a definite integral function from 0 to t. Now we're doing the y velocity, so we'll, we will retrieve y1t from our y variables menu from the parametric. There we go. And we'll integrate that with respect to t. And that'll give us a position function. Again, in this problem, there was no initial position given. So we will just assume that it's at the origin. Now, our interval was 0 to 1. So for plotting purposes, let's go ahead and set our t range from t min of 0 to t max of 1. We're going to try a t step of 0 0.1. And then we'll just do a zoom fit, because we don't really have a good feel for what kind of window we might need. So we tried the zoom fit. And here we go. Now you can see that that t-step value of 0.1 is probably not fine enough because this path is looking choppy, polygonal. Uh, we'd like to get it a little smoother. Also, we must have a pretty big window given how there are so many hash marks along the x-axis there. Let's actually look at our window. And you can see that the zoom fit has set the x and y range for us, and they're really quite large. 
Well, that makes sense given the uh, look of those velocity functions. Okay, what we'll do is let's change our x scale to 100 so there'll be a hash mark for every 100 units. And I'll go ahead and round up to an x max of 300. So we'll plot from 0 to 300 in the x range. And y min, let's just go make that negative 150 and y max positive 150. And similarly, let's set our y scale to 100 also. So we'll just only have a hash mark for every 100 meters. With all those things set in our window, the last thing I'd like to do is make the t-step much more fine. So we'll go up to t-step. Let's set that to 0 0.05 instead and see if that will give us a smoother graph. All right, I think we're ready to plot. Let's take a look. Ah, and there's a much nicer, smoother graph. Now, I'm running my cursor along the path. This is the value, the length of that path is what we computed with that definite integral. So that's the total distance traveled along that path of the boat. In contrast, the displacement would be the actual change in position from the beginning to the end. We can actually get a readout of that by using trace. If I turn on the trace, remember we started at the origin. If we jump to t equals 1, we will jump to the ending position. And that's actually giving us the displacement. Our x changed by this amount, and our y changed by this amount. So the displacement is actually a vector, while the total distance traveled is a single number. And that winds up this short video. For more resources like these, please see education.ti.com.